So I've always been amazed by the world around us and the marvelous things that people are capable of doing. Whether it's finding a vaccine for a disease, fighting for social justice, or creating the internet, I find inspiration everywhere. But I didn't know where I fit into this grand scheme of things until I found science. And it's been how I've interacted with the world since. Two years ago, one of my friend's mothers passed away from melanoma. It's one of the deadliest cancers, and the tragic numbers are rising. But it's known that when it's diagnosed early, it's fairly easy to cure. So the problem that we're dealing with isn't that it's a particularly difficult cancer, but rather that people aren't getting diagnosed early enough. I wanted to see if I could create a tool that allowed the common person easy access to accurate and free preliminary results. I tackled this problem by using computer science. Dermatologists use a very specific set of visual standards when they're diagnosing melanoma. It's called the ABCD method, and each one of these letters corresponds to a visual characteristic, asymmetry, border, color, diameter. I started learning about these imaging algorithms that could actually extract visual characteristics from an image. So I brought these two ideas together, and as I started implementing these imaging algorithms, I realized this is a much larger task than I signed up for, and I ended up creating a diagnosis system comprised of many different parts. So the first was image capture. I obtained a database of 350 images that have already been diagnosed by dermatologists. Each one of these images was taken with a standard household camera to best simulate the kinds of tools the common person would be using. The next step was I needed to create a border around the lesion. I wrote an edge detection method called radial search, and how this works is it takes lines from the edge of the image and shoots it towards a user-defined user center, and the gradient is taken along that line. Whenever the gradient spikes, that corresponds to a large difference between the colorings of the pixel and subsequently the edge of the lesion. I repeated this around the entire lesion and then used an averaging method to smooth everything out. Now that we have an accurate border, the next step is fairly simple. I can use these two equations, which are based off of a circle, to calculate for border and asymmetry regularity. So the border irregularity index is based on the relationship between the perimeter and the area. And the asymmetry regularity index is based on the relationship between the delta area of the lesion when it's folded over its axis and its total area. Well, now that we've quantified border and asymmetry irregularity, I need, com I need to combine all this data in some useful way. That's where my artificial neural network comes in. This is a machine learning algorithm that is based on how the neurons work in our brain. So it can take in all these numbers and all these images, and it can essentially learn what determines if a le given lesion is going to be benign or if it's going to be malignant. With my database of 350 images, I got in at about an 80% accuracy. So in science, we're always asking ourselves, what is the next step, and what does the future of this project look like? So for me, I really want to up my accuracy to at least 90% before I'm comfortable with putting this technology out, for pe out there for people to use. In order to do that, I need to expand my database. <coughs> that way, the network has a lot more information to draw from and has a lot more information to learn from. And that's where the cloud comes in. I can use the cloud to allow dermatologists and, uh, der and doctors from all over the country, all over the world, to upload their images directly onto the network. That's going to expand my database and increase the accuracy. But then, with a lot more data, I'm going to need a lot more computing power. I hope my network will be able to expand to accommodate thousands, even millions of images, but one PC isn't going to be enough to handle all that information. So I can use cloud computing to distribute all that information across many different computers to increase the accuracy, the increase the efficiency. Eventually, the patient's diagnosis is going to be based off of thousands of images from hundreds of doctors, all working together for one common goal, to decrease the number of deaths caused by melanoma. Thank you. Yeah, thanks yeah. so much. Appreciate it. Do we have, do we have a chance? Can, can Lizzie take any questions? Is that possible? That'd be great. Thanks. Okay. First of all, I just, that was just spectacular. Okay, now, who here feels pretty good about what they've accomplished? <laughs> That's what I thought. We've got to tear you down to build you back up again. So, Lizzie, please give some career advice to the professional. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. No, any questions for Lizzie on this? Uh, just spectacular, isn't it? Yeah. Just amazing. Is, is your approach extendable to other areas? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think um, especially part, well, it's kind of split into two parts the way I think of it. There's the image processing and the artificial neural network. So image processing you can actually use in lots of different medical fields, like looking at different kinds of tumors, looking at um, MRI scans and things like that, segment image segmentation of those. And then the artificial neural network can be also used in a lot of medical applications as well. I've seen, um, I've read papers on people using it for lung cancer diagnosis, prostate cancer diagnosis, et cetera. So yeah, it can be extended. 
Sorry, Joe. Uh, Yeah, that's a good question. So I started out, I mean, I've always kind of been a little bit of a biology nerd. I really like cells and things in middle school. That was kind of my favorite unit. And then once I started going into high school, I started learning about, you know, this huge growing field of computer science. And I started going to these computer science seminars just kind of on the weekends, learning a little bit about, you know, um, image processing, machine learning, quantum theory, robot control theory, etc. And so it was there that I kind of got the idea for my project of bringing those two things together. And I think that medicine and computer science is one of those fields that's really growing and that nowadays the disciplines are starting to really in interconnect with one another. So I mean over the summer I was working on a project that was a, a pairing between Intel and a local, un a local hospital and these disciplines are all kind of connecting w together with biology, computer science, physics, etc. Greg, did you have a question? Same question. Two for one. Yeah. Yes. Did I hear you say you did quantum physics in high school? Um, question I was, did Lizzie do quantum <laughs> physics in high school? And what did you do after lunch? <laughs> uh, those, I'll say, the seminars, those were the pretty hard ones to understand. But I learned a little bit of like XOR gates and different thi kinds of things like that. But a little bit, not a lot. Oh, um, yeah. I'm at Jesuit High School, but those classes that I took were at a local university. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they're not teaching quantum theory in our computer science classes, no. Any other questions? Yes. Sorry. So actually with melanoma, if the skin is lighter, then it's more likely that you're going to have, you're going to get the cancer because there's less mel melanin in your skin. So when I'm looking at the gradient function, it's measuring the spike from when it goes from even skin to uneven skin. That's where I point the edge of the lesion. So because there's going to be a large difference between the skin color and the lesion color when the skin is lighter, that is more tailored towards people with lighter skin who are more likely to get the cancer. Does that answer your question? Shalash. Thanks for the paddle usage, by the way. That was exemplary. <laughs> Although, actually, it wasn't. You're supposed to use the red side with the question. Question. OK, go for it. OK, I like the question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Google easily. <laughs> All right, go ahead now. Say what's on your mind. Um, <laughs> well, the, I do love Google. I like the, the, the environment and the community. Well, and the what, what do you think is the coolest, like, you know, Salim was talking about, you know, Palantir being the coolest company. What do you think is the coolest tech company? Do you I'm, not, I'm not being actually biased. I really do think it's Google. <laughs> Seriously? Um, yeah, I no, do. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm young and yeah, Google yeah. does appeal to the younger generation. Um, but I mean, I guess to expand on your question, kind of what I want to do in my future is that I want to go into medicine and I want to become a doctor, probably a pediatric specialist. I don't exactly know what I want to specialize in yet, but I've always been interested in this kind of computer science medicine field, and I really want to do more research like that in college. Yes, Andy. So for me, it was definitely finding the border. So the border is kind of, I thought of it as the crux of the entire project. Because with the border, I can find extract characteristics like the perimeter and its area, its asymmetry, things like that. Those are the necessary things I need to continue on. So once I was able to create that method, the radial search method, and get it working, that was my aha moment. That was when I knew, OK, I can continue on and keep going. So my, and I have one last question. Does it work just on? Uh, Nevis, or does it also work for squamous and, and um, uh, come on, basal cell? Um, well, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by your question, but In I... Other words, just for identifying moles, or does it work on squamous cell carcinoma and oh, basal cell? Oh, um, it's just for identifying moles. Moles, yeah. fantastic. So All right, so we're running out of time. I must say thank you very much, Lizzie, for coming and sharing that with us.